they get an episode about tremors, he said. It'll be fun, he said. Welcome to On Location with Chris Langley, the Trimmers edition. Mr. Langley. Yes. Is this one of the Good greatest morning. movies? Good morning. How are you today? I am pretty fine. How about you? Excellent. Thank uh, you for asking back. Okay. Tell me, is this one of the greatest movies ever filmed in the Alabama Hills? Uh, it's my favorite, probably. I don't know if that makes it the greatest. Um, Gunga Dean's pretty great, but uh this is a very special film and it seems to have a life of its own that's continued for 30 years um and so it was very magical at the time they were filming here i think a lot of hard work obviously and challenges and creativity um, and they kind of went in our weather scheme from very cold to very hot towards the end so but always windy um the, there's a lot of mentions of the wind blowing and them wearing masks and this and that so interesting. So tell us about Trimmers. How did, did they just approach the museum and say we want to make a, a science fiction movie here? Well we didn't exist then so they didn't appro approach the, uh, the museum but um, we did have a film festival. Did we have a film festival? Yes. I think we had just started and, um, and I was a real looky-loo at that point, so when I found out they were actually filming, several of my friends were working on it, but they were very open anyway, so I went to quite a few of the scenes. I was a teacher then, I, I, we were finishing the year, which is always crazy, so uh, my time was sort of limited, but I got to go to where, they, uh, where Rhonda was filming at the very beginning, and it was very cold, and she had, she's dressed like it's the middle of summer with uh, not too much clothing on. And so they would, she would do a scene, and it was when the seismograph was reacting. And it was right up, not far from Whitney Porter Road. And as soon as they said cut, they had this huge, the biggest fur thing that I've ever seen. They would wrap her in it, because it was really bitter. And boy, in the, in, in the footage, you can't tell that it's really cold. Um, it looks hot, so it's kind of, you know, one of those night for day things. This was cold, hot for cold, I guess, or cold for hot, whatever, whichever it would be. Anyway, uh, it was interesting. And then I was out at the aqueduct the second day of filming, and that was really interesting as well. The, the worm had already killed itself, but... Spoiler, the worm commits suicide. Well, I don't think it commits suicide. I think it's an accident. It's hungry. And, you know, they originally, when they came up with the idea, it was uh, Steve Wilson. And he was uh, working, it, he was very young, obviously, and he was working on some projects, uh, I think, for the military at the China Lake base um, as a summer intern, perhaps, or something. Anyway, one day he went out and he sat on a rock and looked at the desert and he became up with this idea, what if what if they were under the ground and would come up and grab you but it was also inspired by a, a insect that we have here called um, ant lions and they build these little holes um, and they're under there and so the ant walks along and then falls in and gets eaten and so those were two of the inspirations for land sharks which eventually became tremors had several different names during the filming that you know they were pre-production names and it was kind of silent what was it called silent something and then beneath perfection and then finally um, it was released as tremors what were the major locations where the shooting took place well there's a whole bunch of them obviously perfection is down on cactus flats road and it was high up it, so it had a really nice uh, overlook of the valley down there. That's about a half an hour south of Lone Pine. Then uh, Fred's head was out on 136 and they built that shack. It wasn't already there. And um, let's see what else. So Edgar was up on a um, uh, 
high tension uh, tower uh, right where 190 um, intersects with 395. The aqueduct was further north and then Bert and Heather's house was even out of um, along uh, Mazurka Canyon Road which is out of Independence. Um, there are two scenes in the Alabama Hills that are particularly notable. One is the pole vaulting scene and that the rock that they were trapped on is a real rock and all the rest of the rocks were artificial rocks um, that uh, they had to place because apparently when God was making the, those rocks, uh, the real rocks, uh, he didn't put them pole vaulting distance apart so they had to fill them in with that. And then the jackhammer scene is on Tuttle Creek and they built out the cliff some to hide the hydraulics that ran the worm and the the uh, jackhammer as it cut through the road. And then finally, the uh, near the end of this, the, the scenes up where they're dragging, with the bulldozer, they're dragging the, the truck uh, bed that has lost its wheels. That's quite far up towards the mountains, sort of at the base of um, Mount Langley, I think, up in that area. And, and then finally, the very final scene, besides being done with miniatures, was up at um, Chalk Bluffs in Bishop when they look out and you can see the, I guess that's uh, Bishop Creek, I think. So, so they were spread all over and there were a lot of places, a lot of things in between, a lot of driving shots and, and such. So they really used the locations to their best advantage. Um, I think it's a great movie just to see all of the opportunities there are here. And they actually made some local hires, didn't they? Yeah, they did. There were quite a few people. Not so many actors. Uh, there was a stand-in actor for the little girl on the pogo stick, who I think was here at that time. And she actually got more, uh, quite a bit of camera time. And then um, several of the crew members, um, artist Dan Dickman and Alan Aiken, and uh, uh, who else? Uh, oh, I think Chewy Perez got a credit as um, Tumbleweed Wrangler, and those are all local people. Now, tell me about this gentleman standing by us. Who's standing behind us? Oh, that's no gentleman. Uh, that is the, what's called the exploding head graboid. So it's one of the graboids. They had a lot of different ones. Some were on wheels, some were miniatures. Some were full-blown, but that's one of the ones that rises out of the ground, I think, down in perfection. Not positive where it was used, because there are a couple of places where it would have been used. And it was, those were the days before CGI, basically, and so they had to be all manual. They were puppets, and people had to be inside them, and often they were buried in the sand, and, you know, they would push it up, and they struggled to make the, the uh, graboids, the the things with the mouths um, be more flexible and move around like snakes because at first they didn't do that. That was a big challenge for, I think, Alec Gillis, um, who was a spe special effects director. Are there any other elements of the story that you'd like to recount? Um, besides the ones I have, I, I think I was impressed by um, um, all of the construction that went on um, and like on Friday a friend told me they drive they drove by where Fred's place was on 136 and there wasn't much there and on Monday the house was there with the um, hubcaps and everything and um, that was kind of interesting how quickly they created it and then we took a lot of the artificial rocks which were of, uh, wood structures with foam covering them and they were here and I had a community theater at that point and one rock served through many Alice in Wonderland and Pinocchio and all different kinds of, of um, plays that we did during that period. It finally just kind of wore out um, but it was kind of interesting and then um, there, a, a person built a lot of their house out of some of the wood. They used the wood in it and then I was always told a, a lady from Glendale came up and bought it to put on her patio in the back, but bought the rocks. I didn't have the heart to tell her they wouldn't last outside um, very long, but because they really weren't permanent rocks, but 
they were very impressive by the time they had them fully painted and they really looked like real rocks I think and she was kind of fooled by them. She knew they weren't real rocks but it was kind of interesting. What was your favorite scene in the movie? Well this is kind of odd but I love it when um, Nestor gets sucked through the tire. I just think that's fun. He lit by the way the actor lives uh, I think his name is Richard Markman and he lives up he has a cabin up in um, Whitney Portal and he's married to Sam Peckinpah's da daughter um, and so um, he's a local in that sense but mostly in the summer so that's kind of fun um, there's there's so many scenes that are wonderful and you know I've seen the movie a, a bunch of times and then recently I watched it again and you never I never get tired of it but I do see new things that I miss the first time because that movie I don't know exactly how long it is, but it moves really fast, and, and the and the pacing is wonderful. I think, and you never get it, it, almost immediately you're on to the next scene, and something's happening that's interesting to watch, as well as slightly scary and slightly exhilarating. So, I think they did a masterful job with the timing and the editing. I just think everything came together, and these were young people then; they were starting out their careers. I think Ron Underwood, this was his first feature uh, directorial job, if I'm not mistaken. So none of them had a huge amount of experience. It just seemed one of those magical moments where everything came together. And even if you don't like big worm movies, uh, it, I think people can find a lot to enjoy in it. We have the, the main rock where they spent the night behind us and now we're following where the pole vaulting rocks were. Now remember they were not real rocks, they were artificial rocks because they had to be as far apart as a pole vaulter could do it. And these were done by stuntmen, they weren't actually the actors. Well we just walked the, the same path that the pole vault, the vaulters covered and um, did not get eaten and then they had a truck here that was supposed to be um, Finn Carter's truck. She jumps in it and she gets her hands finally inside and her upper body, her lo leaving her lower body to be out in the back of the truck and uh, she tries to start the car and of course no car starts when it's supposed to in a movie if they want to build suspense. And, but they finally get going away and they haven't touched the ground and so none of them have been eaten. And they go down this road right here, quite a ways actually. So, um, and it kind of worries me because there's an empty car there and I'm not sure that they weren't eaten by a third generation worm, although there's no blood and brains, so probably not. But we'd, oh, here they come maybe, so maybe they're okay. And then there's a big puff of dust. Right, and it up the road as he's going down. How do yeah. they do that? Um, <laughs> I know that they they use plaster and they colored it asphalt color. And, it it went, it and, and it would break up, yeah. I don't know if they did that here or not, but they, they talk about it. So they really built it out. So when I came up here the night before, it was it was almost like a, a, a straight up and down sheer cliff, and that was so they could hide the hydraulics and then uh, drag them up. And of course, their helmets are full of brains. <laughs> yeah, it made, always makes me hungry when I see that. Starting three, two. That board. Make up. So here we are walking down the main drag of Perfection, Nevada. What can you tell us about this uh, this city? Well, clearly they uh, chose a, a less than accessible site. I mean, it takes a lot to get up here and to bring a whole town up and be 
piece by piece is pretty amazing. And then to build Chang's and several of the houses. And I had also heard that they had um, kind of looted our, our dump for extra stuff to kind of use as set decorations. So they, they, looted, they, they, they looted the Lone Pine dump? To, yes. Interesting. But so on this side is where Chang's Market was approximately, and then the water tower would be behind it. And then there were some buildings and on this side. You have to say that perfection was not perfect in every way. No, but as a, as a dying place. desert town, it was perfect. Let's see what. So I moved this a minute ago and I opened it up. I really think this is where a graboid would have been. Now you got your mounts here, but this is round with the shape. And remember that one right. that came up by Chang's Market? Yeah. And, and, and this remember would be Chang's Market right here. The Finn character is uh, caught in the barbed wire, and Kevin is she has to take off her pants and and pull her out. Sort of. Right. Right. Some barbed wire. I wish we could put a light down in here. This is amazing. Whoa! 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 Yeah, you see that? It just opened up even more. What is your name and where are you from? My name is Stephen Wachowski Jr. I'm from Long Meadow, Massachusetts. I've been coming to the festival here for over 15 years. The Kevin's in the back going, Thank you! That, that's one of my uh, <laughs> one of my favorite parts. And, and also down in the basement with uh, Heather and Bert blasting the grab wood away. Trimmers one on Laserdisc. Also awesome. have the second one on Laserdisc, but didn't want to get too many things. I think was a teenager when I first saw it, and all the sci-fi movies that I saw, I think that was one of my favorites. And ever since, it's been one of my favorite movies. And she was like, uh, yeah, I can probably make that. And so she kept asking for instructions and stuff on how like how big it should be and if it was like good enough. And then she like she made it and then she started selling like mini ones of it and stuff. So you might be able to find her to get like a smaller one or get this one custom made too. Well, I, I'm not taking it off because I know if I set it down. <laughs> Did you turn it around so I can get oh, a picture of it? Oh, of course they want my backside. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's your best side. It's probably my best side. Yeah.